this shower was maybe five, six years old, all marble, and it started to leak. Okay, so here are a couple of other options for waterproofing. We've got the Adex A plus nine. actually made several videos on this topic but it's so important that I'm making another one. So this bathroom floor here is marble. We cut it all covered up and this is the jacuzzi. I know I've got a lot of tools all over the place but there's really no room to work in here. And then this shower here was all marble including the ceiling and the floor and it leaked. So it had to be torn out, and now I'm redoing it. Okay, so I got this shower all prepped and ready to be flood tested. Now flood testing is I got a drain plug in the in the bonding flange there, and I put some water in it last night uh, before I left to test to make sure that that plug is not leaking. Just a little bit, so I can I can check it. Because if it was leaking, then the flood, the flood test wouldn't be wouldn't be correct. So now I'm gonna pour all water in here and get up to a certain height and then I'm gonna I'm gonna mark it and let it sit for 24 hours and I'm gonna come back and check to see uh, if, there, if the level has changed and that's how you do a flood test. Now I am certain that this isn't gonna leak because I've done so many of these and I flood tested pretty much every one of them and I've never had a leak. So why would you want to flood test it? Well, just to be 100% certain that you didn't do something wrong, that there's no defect in the material, and that when you cover it with stone, you know if there's a leak, it's not from what you did. It, it's probably from going to be from a pipe or something else or the drain, or but it's not going to be the tile installation. So when you... This is... That you could be using using a sheet membrane like a curdy membrane over Duroc, or you could be using Duroc and then applying, and then applying a uh, liquid applied waterproofing membrane like Mape, uh, Aqua Defense, a Hydroban, a Lidocrete Hydroban, or some other, or even Ardex A plus nine. They're all good waterproofing materials. They're different made. Um, they're all liquid applied, like the Adex, you, 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 you mix it and then, you know, it's got two components that you mix, whereas the other ones come pre-mixed in a bucket. They're all, it's all good stuff, but you have to install it correctly. So the sheet membranes or the curdy board is another level above that because it's actually a fabric. This is a piece of curdy band. It's actually a fabric, a waterproofing sheet over the curdy board. This one here is just turned the other way around. That's why there's no grid lines. So, or you could put Duroc up and then put a sheet membrane up. So, so this is the sheet membrane over here. You buy in a roll sheet membrane, which is actually which is actually on the floor here. And I put Cody Band all in around the floor to wall connection, and it's a mud floor. I'll show you a picture of that also. Okay, so here are a couple of other options for waterproofing. We've got the Adex A plus nine. This is two component that you mix. Uh, then we've got Hydroban. Uh, this is a liquid applied waterproofing membrane. You open the bucket, it's already um, all set to go. You might have to just mix it a little bit. And we've got another sheet membrane here. This is a Lattercrete sheet membrane. And then another, this is it comes in a longer all this is the noble seal sheet membrane and then um, Ardex also has a has a has a sheet mem membrane and um, then there's obviously the Mape Aqua Defense I don't have a bucket of that 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 right now but that's a similar to this one here and you know there's, there's many different options for waterproofing 
So you might say, well, isn't the, the tile waterproof? Well, the tile itself may be waterproof, depending on the tile. The ceramic tile absorbs a certain amount of water. Um, porcelain tiles absorb much less water. Uh, but that's not the issue. These walls, this is a wood, this is wood construction. This house is all made of wood. It's got two by fours on 16 inches. The floor is made with, with, um, the floor is made with um, joists and then there's plywood or always be over it. So it's all wood. And we're in New England here. This is, this is the Boston area. I'm, uh, I'm actually a little bit north of Boston here uh, on this job. And uh, we have fluctuations in temperature from could be in the, in the summer could be as high as 95, even 100 degrees. In the winter, it can be as low as freezing, below freezing right now. It's 18 degrees outside, so it's pretty cold. So there's a lot of expansion and contraction going around in the, in the house. You might say, well, the house is climate controlled. True, it's climate controlled because it's kept at a, at a temperature, uh, con pretty constant temperature. In the summer, uh, they have a AC. In the winter, they have have heat so it's inside is pretty much constant temperature but outside the house is subject to fluctuating temperatures and then the amount of humidity in the house always changes as well in the winter it's very dry in the summer it can be very damp and just the amount of water that, uh, that penetrates into the lumber can make it move quite a bit so what does that mean for the tile installation it means that the tile on the walls is going to be subjected to movement, especially in, in the corners and corners and wherever uh, there's a change of plane. So, as I was saying, the tile may be waterproof. And uh, for a new installation, uh, like the, at the very beginning when you install the tile and you grout it, it may be completely waterproof. But that doesn't last long because of all the pen, all the movement in the house. It's gonna, it's gonna. It's going to move, you're going to get micro fissures, you're going to get, get movement, and water will always get behind the tile. So when the water gets behind the tile, that's when it creates problems. So now, if you have a waterproof shower, completely waterproof, any water gets behind the tile is not going to penetrate into the cavity wall. It's just going to remain in the shower. Now you might say, well, you know, the shower is only used maybe two or three times a day. Could be two, could be one, could be two, three times a day. This, you know, this is a master bathroom, so it's probably used at least twice a day. So, how much water is that, is that really? Well, think of the, like the Amazon rainforest it gets. I don't know, maybe a hundred inches of rain a year. I, I don't know what that number is. But that's nothing compared to what happens in a shower. In a shower, someone's going to take a 20-minute shower, and uh, depending on the um, on, on the fixtures and the amount of water that comes through, so you might have two, three, four gallons a minute for 15 minutes. Just imagine that amount of water coming into this shower and uh, washing on the walls and, and soaking on the floor. That's a lot of water that you don't want penetrating into your substructure and, com and creating problems with mold and mildew and rot. You need to have the wall, the, sh the, the, the wall's waterproof. Now this shower in particular, the rain head is here, it's got one in the ceiling, it's got a rain head here, and then it's got a body spray. And then we've got a knee wall, and then we've got the curb over there. That curb is never going to see any water because there's actually not going to be even, even a glass door here. There's going to be a glass panel over here in this, in this area here from there to here there's going to be a glass panel and that's it. So all the water is going to be contained over here. So all the water is going to be in this area over here. So I'm going to flood test this and then I'm going to come back and check it and then I can start the tile. So this shower was maybe five, six years old, all marble and it started to leak and the problem was in this particular shower was in the drain where it wasn't properly attached. Um, I didn't actually rip it out so I didn't see what the construction was but I did see 
that the floor under this mud was all completely wet. So the building completely waterproof shower. You could take a, a shower in here right now and a wooden lake. So that's why you want to do the waterproofing before you install the tile. So when water does get below the tile, it's not going to be a problem. Okay, so I got 10 gallons in there right now. Gonna add another, another 10. Mark the level. So I'm going to let that sit overnight and and we'll see how it goes. See now it's deeper over there than over here because I've got this all slanted down towards the rain. Okay so I got the water level marked over there. Right right there and I got another one marked right here I'll come back tomorrow check to make sure this is at the same level if it is okay so this is twenty four hours later see if I can reach without taking a bath Okay, so the water is all drained. I'm going to dry it off a bit and start setting some tile. <laughs> 